Welcome everyone to our second panel today that focuses on the impact BII's investments have had on people. So we'll focus on issues such as gender and inclusion and quality job creation. At the end of today's panel, we'll try and take some questions from you, our online audience. So uh, if you have any question, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Let me introduce let me introduce you now to our panel today. We're joined by Stuart Bradley, the managing partner at Fatiza. Stuart's career began in 1996 with CDC Group and thereafter with Oreos Capital and Fatiza Group, of which he is founder and managing partner. Uh, Fatiza is a leading African private equity manager with uh, investments across the African food value chain and in affordable housing. We're joined by Saurabh Deep Singla, who is the Chief People Officer at Ecom Express Limited. Ecom Express is a leading end-to-end -end technology enabled logistics solutions provider to the Indian e-commerce industry. And Saurabh is responsible for preserving the company's unique positive engagement overseeing talent management and development, diversity and inclusion. We're joined by Clarissa DeFranco, Managing Director and Head of Private Equity here at BII. Clarissa has been with us since 2007, and she manages a team uh, that has a $2.5 billion portfolio that covers SME, mid cap, large cap, and private equity sector funds across Africa and South Asia. And finally, uh, we have Liz Lloyd, Chief Impact Officer here at BII. She leads in overseeing the assessment, management, and measurement of development impact activity and engages on focus areas such as gender, job quality, climate change, and human capital. Welcome to each of you. Uh, Liz, if I could kick off with you. I mean, you lead our impact team. So can you start by talking about how we ensure that impact on people is at the heart of all of our investing. Well, thank you. And let me start by touching on our, our rigorous framework and processes. Uh, you have heard about our development objectives for the strategy period of 22 to 26. Um, these are focusing on investments that are productive, sustainable and inclusive. And one of the principal underlying goals for our investments is to improve economic opportunities for people. This might mean making an investment because we anticipate it will create more and better jobs or improve incomes or provide jobs that are inclusive. And uh, what we always think about making the assessment about what sustainable development goal or what development challenge we're contributing to and how we will do this directly or indirectly. And for the inclusive uh, pillar, uh, we're really thinking about the, the focus on people. So we're looking at the scale and depth of impact, what our contribution is, what difference we make, uh, and what are the risks to achieving a positive impact. So in sum, we look at the difference we make to people's lives. Uh, and we've set up our impact management framework and scoring system to prioritize impacts in lower income countries amongst lower income populations and investments that make a difference to women and prioritize investments in black owned and led businesses. And that's because this is where the biggest difference to people's lives can be made. And we've created a new impact scoring system. And we specifically look at how inclusive every investment is against those criteria and how it touches people's lives. So to take an example, if we're thinking about an investment into the agricultural sector, we'll look at what difference that investment makes to farmers uh, the farmers or consumers affected? What's the current income of the farmers? What proportion of women? Will this investment raise the productivity and income for the farmers? Will it improve the use of inputs such as fertilizers to, to lead to greater product productivity, climate resilience, and hence more affordable quality food for consumers? So we, we really focus also on what contribution we're making. Are we mobilizing capital uh, or are we uh, by our focus on good environmental and social standards going to improve the quality of jobs or the proportion of women in decent jobs. We then set benchmarks and measures and monitor the program progress through the lifetime of the investment. 
In short, we seek to understand deeply how our investment is a benefit to people and hold ourselves to account. But I think you've also heard from colleagues and you will shortly from other panelists about how the impact on people's lives is a really real and everyday part of our partnership and how motivating it is for us all and how much it contributes to our culture of being impact led. Thanks Liz for sharing that sort of principled approach. It's always good to get a sense of how it plays out in practice. So uh, I wonder Sorab, if you can tell us a little bit about Ecom Express and, um, and what BII's investment has meant for you. Sure, so, so thanks Colin and uh, I'm glad that we've been invited for this forum. Uh, and I completely am aligned with what Liz just said. Uh, and I will talk about how BII could kind of really, really create a difference to, to the life for Ecom Express and all the employees. So, so look, we, we, are a, we are one of the India's leading technology enabled logistics service provider and we do it focused for e-commerce only. And uh, some things which kind of keep us, uh, make us to stand apart is we are more rural, less urban. And for us, we're trying to create an, a, 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 an organization which goes to rural, creates employment opportunities there, rather than getting poor people to become more poorer when they, when they kind of move to the, to the larger cities. So we started in 2013 and we only had about 300 uh, employees then and about 42 delivery centers. Today, as we speak, we are covering every state across this country and the size and scale of the country is fairly big. We are, we are now about 3,400 plus locations being operated in this country, wherein 27,000 plus pin codes of the country are being covered. What does it mean? $1.2 billion population of the country. We have an ability to touch the country inch by inch, 97% every day. And this is done by, by, by the workforce that we have and the warriors that we have are on the ground. There are about 60,000 plus people who are, who are working. And 85% of these people are in rural, only 10 to 15% is in urban. And uh, our, our continuous endeavor is that the tier three and tier four cities in the country, that's where we bring more and more employment. And it's, it becomes sustainable as well. So it's, a, it's, it's business led and it creates employment. We're able to gain employment of people who are much more committed and they're, they're long-termers with us because the opportunities available are not as many. A quick uh, thing how BII has, has kind of helped us. Uh, the investment came um, in 2020 uh, and then there's a repeat investment as well. Uh, there was a study which BII conducted along with 60 decibels. And this study paved way for the base of creating rural employment and repeat employment and, and for people who are, who are not employable as of now. Plus, how do we create a difference for diversity in this country where the women workforce is otherwise a taboo in the logistics industry? This industry is a, has always been a male dominated industry in the country. And then how do we create a difference in terms of the environment, health and safety? So all of these things, a lot of inputs, which kind of came up, uh, the, study, the study told us that almost every five out of 10 employees of Ecom Express believed that their standard of living and the way their life used to be has significantly improved. And about 92% of this respondent said, they, and, and especially females. So the females had a much, much higher percentage. And they said that our lifestyle, the way we're learning and the way we are now independent in the rural India has been a significant high since they joined Ecom Express. We, we, could, also, we could also find out that almost 36% of this respondent said they were the first time job seekers. They had never done a job ever. So they didn't know what logistics is. They didn't know what e-commerce was. But they also came back and said, I have a very much improved lifestyle and I am satisfied and learning in a rural area where otherwise we don't get, get stuff. And then look, and the story goes on, the, the introduction of gig workers, uh, which is giving flexibility to all type of people. Uh, whether I talk about getting, getting females who otherwise never uh, got the opportunity to, to get into a job. 
whether I talk about some of the disruptions that BII and Ecom jointly have been creating uh, and co-creating and, and making a difference, a lot of those things uh, continue to happen. So, so yeah, that's that's where it is. That's a, that's an exciting story. I, I wonder, Saurabh, if we can, I, I know that you're especially proud of the work you've done at Ecom Express around diversity and inclusion. And I wonder if we could dig a little bit deeper on the sort of the gender aspect of this and the gender action plan that we've been working on together. Uh, and, and that's that's very close to my heart for sure. And 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 to the founders of Ecom Express and to the entire leadership, we take pride in the fact that while we were always very conscious of the fact that look, we have to do something different for the diversity and inclusion in this country. Should we want to create a sustainable business and should we want to really create an impact on the society where we operate? In? But look, with BII, uh, we created a gender action plan. Uh, I'll tell you a quick result. So when BII made the investment, we were a 2% diversity. Diversity was only female and male ratio. And that was at a base of 20,000 employees. Today at a base of 60,000 plus employees, we are at a 5.5% diversity. This diversity has grown 2x in the last three quarters only. So there's significant focused inputs that are happening. And we have a target of moving it to 8% this year and by to 20% by 2025. 20%, the base at that time is going to be in 100,000. So we our percentages are significant because the headcount continues to increase. Now, what was one big thing I would say what BII did to us? Uh, BII created a board uh, platform. So what, what's there is the entire board of directors, there is a set which has to come and they own diversity and inclusion, they own EHS. So, so for me, that was a big thing that BII introduced and, and kind of created this. Uh, what we've been able to do, one more big thing which is there is, we are now right now talking to government and pushing uh, the strings to say, why can't women work in night shifts? Just imagine, I, I have secured the morning shifts in all my large location, plus the automated sorter location, the sorter operations we've secured for females. And we've said, you can't touch this. I can only have 50% or lesser males in the morning shift. Because that's a clean, easy shift for them. Anything which is automation, we're saying they need to learn and they can grow faster with this. But we're fighting with the government and saying open night shifts. And that's where we could get the first victory, which is in Maharashtra, in near Mumbai, where we operated the night shift for females with full government support. For me, that's a big, big change. And, and these, these are happening because we have a lot of support and continuous guidance on how things can happen across the world as well. Then we've also opened recently five delivery centers this is last mile where females come and operate the last mile center. They will go on bikes. There are five centers which we opened, which are called pink DCs. There is no male which can enter there. That's the true power of my female warriors there. They are the ones who do this. And not just this. Uh, what we're also doing is across the country, we have completely changed our standards and we've said, we will do what is best infrastructure because then the quality of life for females and then we appreciate the need can and it's not just limited to a building where you have a security guard. We are talking about the toilets to be clean. We're talking about the housekeeping and security staff also to be females. We are also talking about sanitary pads to be available in those locations from the organization. And we are also talking about the fact that things that maybe as a country we believe is undiscussable. We are opening it up and saying, it is all right to talk about these things. And on top of it, the prevention of sexual harassment as an act prevails in the country. Our committee is one of the best and we've been able to solve multiple things, which is where in the recent Great Place to Work Award that we backed, our female employees score, gave a score, which was at least two notch higher than then the male employees, they said, we are definitely sure this is a great place to work. So that, that journey, 
in such less time, Colin, uh, is about actually a great partnership. Um, otherwise, it would have taken us much more time. Uh, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of push, and there's a lot of collaboration that's happening um, across the board, across the promoter set, across leadership, across the ground leadership as well. Diversity now is not male and female. We are introducing the transgender in our HR system, and we have it on our corporate objective to, to get a set this year to learn with them. Thanks very much. Thanks for all of those, you know, practical examples. And I can see you've got that great place to work certification prominent there. You're obviously proud about that. Um, Clarissa, um, I mean, you lead our investment funds team and, and uh, investment in funds has been historically important to BII for, you know, for decades. Can you share with us some of the examples of the way that um, investments in funds can transform people's lives. Thanks, Colin. Um, I think I'll start off by saying that through funds, we've supported over 659,000 jobs uh, across our markets. Um, and this varies from you know, small companies uh, to very large companies across the board. But through our engagement and through our impact-led focus, I'm going to highlight some of the areas where we're working particularly hand in hand with our partners. Um, we're looking to address the healthcare challenges through innovation uh, to the provision of services uh, that are more affordable and accessible. So HealthQuad is a manager that we backed in 2021. Uh, they've invested in a company that has done a crowdfunding platform for medical emergencies for those that don't have insurance, allowing them to uh, be able to provide for those medical emergencies. We are working with managers to increase digitization, to increase productivity. For example, Convergence has provided, uh, has invested in a company that provides airtime credit services to prepaid mobile subscribers. They have a footprint across 40 countries and they have a proprietary credit algorithm, a scoring algorithm, which allows uh, individuals to get that airtime credit, which allows them to manage their businesses, uh, go about their daily lives. Um, on the other, and we have managers like DPI and APIS who have backed an Egyptian MFI that's embracing digitization. Uh, they serve over three quarter million people and they're supporting women as customers, but also helping women become credit officers, uh, really expanding over the last four years to you know, the branch network two and a half times uh, and really thinking about how to train uh, women into those various roles. Uh, and finally, uh, thinking about the provision of goods and services to the low-income population. We've been working with Incitor, uh, who is a manager across South Asia, supporting SMEs in agriculture, affordable housing, and healthcare. Uh, for example, they've invested in a company that provides patients with chronic illnesses, with high-quality generics uh, at an affordable price, which they would otherwise not be able to pay. Um, so, oh, sorry. Go sorry. ahead, Clarissa. <laughs> No, that's right, Colin. So you know, these are just a few examples. There are many more uh, that really think about our focus on productivity, inclusion, and sustainability. Thanks very much. And, and what I'm struck by is not only the impact that you're having in the markets through investments, but also the impact you're having on the investing market itself. And I think we may come back with another question to you about, about some of the work that you've been doing there. But for sure. Stuart, uh, tell us about Fatiza. I mean, Fatiza has got a very broad impact uh, sort of mandate. And I'm, I'm curious how you set priorities and how Fatiza thinks about the impact that it has in Africa. Yeah, thanks, Colin. Uh, and thanks for having us today. I mean, just Fatiza, we're an African sector focused private equity fund manager, as you've described. Um, our two focuses at the moment are the food value chain and affordable housing. Um, our strategy is twofold. So it's impact and returns. Uh, we don't believe that financial performance and impacts are mutually exclusive, but rather mutually beneficial. Um, and we've embedded that belief in a rebranding process, actually, that we went through at the end of last year. And, and as you can see, we've, we've other side, we've placed a, an ampersand at the heart of our logo to reflect this inclusion. We also changed our tagline to more than capital, which is a real reflection of what we're about. Um, so we target impact in a number of areas, um, including job creation, food security, poverty reduction, inequality and climate change. Um, perhaps a few stats in terms of what we've achieved to date. Uh, we've maintained almost 12,000 jobs to date through our investments. 
We've created close to 4,000 new jobs. Um, we've directly impacted and supported over 100,000 smallholders, uh, smallholder farmers in Africa and micro entrepreneurs. And I'm really proud to say that more than 90% of our employees in our investments are now paid on or above national living wage, um, which mustn't be confused with minimal, minimum wage, which obviously is a lot lower typically. Um, I think we're a bit different as well. In, in, in addition to the impact we seek, given our sector focus, we've got two kind of types of people within our team. So we've got you know, financial investors in the team, but we've also got operational individuals as well. Um, and it really goes to our tagline of more than capital. Um, because of that operational expertise, we can actually get really involved with our portfolio companies, help them develop strategies, help them really drive and grow those businesses. And, and that's because we've got individuals within our firm who have come out of operations rather than sort of financial backgrounds. Um, you know, BII joined our most recent fund um, in 2021, um, which is a 2x challenge uh, qualified fund. And that is one of our core focuses of that fund. And I'm really pleased to say, actually, that we've now made four investments in this new fund, Patissa Food Fund 2. And already three of our new investments have achieved 2x status. Um, so we're, we're proud of that. And it's a, it's a goal that we're on. And through that, we've developed our own guidance tool, actually, for our portfolio companies to help them take the steps towards gender diversity. So conducting gender gap assessments at the start of our investments but also helping to develop gender and non-discrimination policies, review recruitment processes, gender sensitivity training, and, and talent identification, talent management and training really for those businesses. Um, I'd like, if I can, Con, I was gonna share an actual real life example, uh, which I think is always more interesting in terms of you know, an investment that we made and, and the impact that we achieved through that. Um, and it's a business called Meridian uh, that we invested in back in 2014, which is a, fertilizer imports and blending business based in Malawi, but covering Mozambique, Zambia, Zimbabwe. Um, Meridian has two types of customers. Um, it's got large commercial farmers and smallholders. Um, and Malawi itself runs a, a donor-backed fertilizer program um, where donors provide uh, funding for fertilizer for the government. And the government then provides smallholders with a voucher. Uh, the smallholder then comes to one of our stores um, and gets a bag of fertilizer. But it's a process that was really set up, I think, in the 1950s. It's never changed in terms of the formulation. So it's one size fits all. It doesn't matter what a smallholder is growing um, or where they're growing it and on what soil types, they get the same bag of fertilizer. So we saw an opportunity there, which was to create some bespoke fertilizers for smallholders. But the challenge really was convincing management that this was a good business practice um, and going to be profitable and also then to convince smallholders to change their techniques and try a new fertilizer. So we use technical assistance funding. We, we'd secured in our prior fund a 10 million line from the EU of TA funding. And we ran a program around, initially it was a pilot around 30 of our stores. We measured the soils around those stores of the smallholders and we analyzed what they were growing. And then we formulated six bespoke fertilizers uh, depending on what they were growing and where they were growing it. But then we ran trial plots because you can't just say to a smallholder, hey, look, you've been using, you know, this one type of fertilizer for 20 years. Give this new variety a go. So we ran trial plots. And through that and th that training program, we trained 15,000 smallholder farmers, 70 percent of whom are women, um, and show them that we can improve their yields. And, and the success was we improved maize yields by 30 percent. We improve yields on ground nuts by 26 percent and there's a whole list of data behind that um, but it was just using you know a new formulation of fertilizer same cost just a different type of fertilizer ultimately meridian impacted 54,000 smallholders in malawi um, and it was a fantastic win-win you know improving livelihoods for smallholders we improved food security for malawi and ultimately we got to sell more fertilizer um, that, that unit, uh, it was called Farm Services Unit, management adopted it. They increased it then from 30 stores to 90 stores. And we had an agronomist at each one of those stores to help smallholders. Ultimately, we sold Meridian. So we successfully exited the business. Uh, we made a two times in dollars money back on our investment, a 20% IRR. Uh, and the, the seller that, that, or the buyer that bought the business actually attributed value to that smallholder business that we developed. So really just you know, demonstrating that you can make financial and impact returns.
Yeah, it's a great example of a double bottom line investment. I wonder, picking up on this um, kind of theme of more than capital, I mean, what is it that BII uh, can provide that helps support these types of investments? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, maybe we grabbed the tagline before you did, because, you know, I, I see you guys as exactly the same in terms of it's more than just funding that you bring to people like Patisa um, to help us deploy. Um, it is more than funding. I mean, I think, you know, you've got a deep pocket of knowledge there. I know it. I came out of the old CDC many years ago. Um, but, you know, 70 years of experience. I think you've got some really great pockets uh, of knowledge there, whether it be sector, impact, ESG, or simply I think what we've learned is just connecting us with other people and sharing learnings, you know, rather than us all out there in isolation, sort of reinventing the wheel. Um, so you've been hugely impactful on us through that. I think specifically at the moment we're exploring with you uh, a TA facility. So with, with BII and another three of our DFI investors, we're putting together a, a, a TA facility. And the lesson that we've learned in our prior funds is we can be so much more impactful if we can blend TA along with our investments and drive more impacts as we saw in Meridian. Um, I mean, you've, you've co-invested with us. I mean, we've recently closed an investment with BII and uh, two other DFIs as well in the Lona Group, which is a really large scale fruit processing, pack house, cold chain and export business from South Africa into Europe. Um, and without you, we couldn't have scaled up. We just didn't have sufficient capital. You know, Lona Group really liked us as a partner and saw that we what we could do in terms of driving value, but we couldn't do it on our own without BII. Um, I think just one more, and you know, is really at the start of the investment actually into us going back to gender, is I think you quite quickly identified that we had a very male investment committee uh, at Patisa and encouraged us that we should try and, and attract women to that IC. You know, and I'm pleased to say that we did, and we brought uh, Naraya onto our IC. She's been with us now for a year, and and you know, just really changed the tone of the IC um, in what was a very male ego, perhaps dominated. I see, um, and I think we're making better investment decisions for it. We're looking at things in a different way and we've got a different voice on that IC and we're better for it. So, you know, helps us in many areas. Thanks, Stuart. I mean, Liz, I mean, both Saurabh and Stuart talk a bit about gender. And I'm wondering, I mean, I mean why is gender so important for BII? And, and what is it that we're trying to accomplish with our gender action strategy? Well, I mean, ultimately, our goal is to improve the lives of women uh, and other systemically underrepresented groups in our markets by intentionally opening up economic opportunities. And I think the the examples that have been given are are exactly sort of on point. I mean, you know, as an investor, we can originate, we can actively seek investments that are already gender balanced and inclusive and support inclusive businesses and help fit, fill financing gaps. I mean, others earlier on in the, in the session were talking about how, uh, how women and other underrepresented groups sometimes find it hard to, to access capital markets or access finance. And the second is this aspect of value creation, working with investees to support them um, uh, in whatever dimension that is. That could be uh, at the leadership level, it could be at the workforce level with supply chains in designing products uh, as as we've heard today, um, so that's one aspect, and we've got a 25% gender finance target um, for the next strategy period. And the other element which we've we've added for a focus area in this strategy period is a focus on uh, black owned and led uh, businesses in sub-Saharan Africa um, to allow uh, black entrepreneurs to access capital. Uh, at a, at, you know, because what we found in, in our portfolio and we have a look uh, across the market is that uh, access to capital, access to capital isn't always uh, as easy as it should be. So those are really the main areas. Thanks a lot, Liz. Clarissa, I mean, Stuart gave this example of actually adding a woman onto their IC committee. I mean, are you seeing similar uh, moves in the market. 
Yeah, Colleen, no, it's nothing's more rewarding uh, and exciting than seeing what was once uh, an annoying nuisance question become mainstream and, and seeing our managers and investors really lead with what they're doing on gender and inclusion more broadly. Um, you know, Stuart's mentioned the role of, you know, diversifying their investment committee. You saw Sarab hearing about, you know, what are the challenges that are preventing women from being part of their businesses uh, and, and spending time to understand, you know, what can be done to fix that. I remember four years ago, we had done an analysis of uh, senior women re represented or not being represented across our managers. And in particular, in West Africa, we did not have a single fund manager that had a woman uh, in a senior leadership position at, at a founder level or managing partner level. Um, and I was speaking to uh, one, uh, one team there during a conference asking, you know, they had just recently hired uh, two, two women onto their team that were working extremely hard. And I, I asked them, you know, what are you going to do to ensure that this woman is part of the partnership within, you know, a, a certain time frame? And uh, this woman, uh, reached out to me just a couple months ago to say, you know, that that one question made a huge difference in my journey as a professional uh, because it allowed me to, you know, expand my own professional development, allowed my partners to think about, you know, what is that path going to look like? Uh, and she recently became a partner in that team. And that was extremely rewarding. One seeing, you know, even just a small question, which might seem awkward at a point in time, can lead to changes. Um, and it's been great to see how that you know, I no longer have to ask, you know, have you thought about how diverse or not diverse your partnership is? On the contrary, everybody's really excited to tell us about, you know, the changes and where they see the challenges and how we can support them. Uh, and when we work hand in hand, as you know, Stuart mentioned, thinking about, you know, where are those networks? Can we connect you to other networks to allow you to find the right pools of talent? And it's not just around gender. I mean, Liz has talked about ethnic diversity as well, race diversity. Uh, engaging with our, uh, with our partners around that is really critical to ensure that we move towards the right way. Yeah, it's great. I, I can really tell the excitement that you feel about seeing these shifts around inclusion in our market. I, I wonder, Saurabh, I mean, Clarissa shares um, shares this discussion from the investor side, but as someone who's responsible for these in, uh, issues inside a company, I mean, what do you think the role of an investor should be in trying to promote diversity and inclusion? So, uh... I think the first thing, uh, the diversity and inclusion is is not just any fancy thing. It is directly related with the business outlook. And, and we at Ecom, we firmly believe it, we've seen it. Uh, for me, more and more investors like BII, uh, if, even if an organization has one investor like this, what it does as a difference is your board, your entire leadership gets a lot, lot more serious about it. And, and look, if you, if you look around all these uh, investments that have been happening in the last couple of years, the global sustainable investment, uh, that itself is a $30 trillion. And we were just trying to study that why would an organization, why would an investment partner look at sustainability as a goal as well? Unless the world becomes a better place to live and it can only become when it's a overall society to represent and we look at sustainable goals for future, uh, I don't think you can build large mammoth organizations purely, purely on on, on profit uh, only. So uh, we at Ecom Express, uh, I mean, we are extremely delighted that we could secure the funding from BII, not because of the dollar number, but it's about a complete change of uh, culture and the vision that we have towards our future. Uh, yeah. Made a huge difference for us. Yeah, and, and Stuart, I, I mean, as you now are engaging with more investors, raising more money for Fatiza, are you also seeing a pickup on these issues around diversity and inclusion in the broader investment community? Yeah, absolutely, Colin. And, and look, it's not just obviously in the DFI world, um, but, but outside of that as well. Um, you know, we're getting definitely we get a lot more questions around that now. ESG impacts, uh, inclusion, etc. Um, but I think you know what really helps us, I think, is is you know having the likes of BII as a sort of a, an anchor investor into our funds because I think to be fair, you do a lot of the legwork. You know, you do all the running around. You know, as Clarissa says, you ask us the challenging questions around diversity and what we're doing. You, you've given us big support and help in terms of ESG policies. I think Nick spoke about it earlier in terms of 
environmental social action plans um, and making sure that we've got our house in order. And, and that gives commercial investors, you know, you know, huge comfort, I think, when they come and join that they know that actually they can tick that box. Um, they want to do it. They don't necessarily know how to, but you've covered it for them. Um, so absolutely, it's a focus. All right. Thanks very much, Stuart, for joining our panel. And thank you as well, Liz, Saurabh, Clarissa. Um, and many thanks to all of you online for taking time from your day to join us on this panel discussion.